let us construct H z equal to 1 minus half z inverse the whole squared divided by 1 minus 1 third z inverse into 1 minus 1 fifth z inverse multiplied by 3 if you like using the lattice structure. Let us expand this. So, we, we would need to expand this because it is not in the pole form or pole 0 form that the lattice structure can be realized. We need it explicitly as polynomials and therefore, we need to expand this. Let us do so. So, H z is clearly 3 times 1 minus 2 times half z inverse that is z inverse plus 1 fourth z raised to the power minus 2 divided by 1 minus 1 third plus 1 fifth z inverse plus 1 by 5 three z times z to the power minus 2. So, that can be expanded as 3 minus 3 z inverse plus 3 by 4 z raised to the power minus 2 divided by 1 minus now 5 and 3 is 8. So, 8 by 15 z inverse plus 1 by 15 z raised to the power minus 2. <coughs> Is that correct? Now, let us start by realizing the denominator by a and z. So, of course, very clearly. Now, here I have conveniently chosen the numerator degree to be less than or equal to the denominator degree. Of course, if it were not, I would first need to carry out a long division, right. So, we first realize a and z. Clearly, n is equal to 2. So, a 2 z is 1 minus 8 by 15 z inverse plus 1 by 15 z raised to the power minus 2. And clearly, the coefficient of z raised to the power minus 2 in z inverse is 1 by 15 and this should be equal to k2 and therefore, k2 is 1 by 15. Now, we know the relation between A 2 and A 1 just for the sake of clarity though we have done it in general just for the sake of clarity let us write down that relationship explicitly. We know that A 2 z is A 1 z plus K 1 times z inverse A 1 tilde z and a 2 tilde z is z inverse a 1 tilde z plus I am sorry this should be k 2 plus k 2 a 1 z is that correct. And therefore, if we take a 2 z minus k 2 times a 2 tilde z, but this term would vanish and it would leave us with 1 minus k 2 squared times a 1 z. I am just redoing that step to make it explicit though we have done it in general for n plus 1. You do not need to do this every time. And therefore, a 1 z is a 2 z minus k 2 a 2 tilde z divided by 1 minus k 2 squared and this is very easy to write. Now, a 2 z is 1 minus 8 by 15 
three volts. Plus one by fifteen z raised to the power minus two. Minus k two, which is one by fifteen times. Now a two tilde z is essentially this written in reverse order. So we have one by fifteen minus eight by fifteen z inverse plus z raised to the power minus two divided by one minus one by fifteen the whole squared. The question is, what is the difference between a? One person has asked, what is the difference between a two z and a two tilde z? They are very, very different. The coefficients are very different. You need to look very carefully to observe that they are very different. The coefficients are in reverse order. So one needs to pay careful attention to understand the example. Okay, they are very different. The coefficients are in reverse order. It's one minus eight by fifteen and one by fifteen, and here it's one by fifteen minus eight by fifteen and one. <coughs> All right. Now, if you look at this difference, one by fifteen z to the power minus two is eliminated because you have one by fifteen z to the power minus two minus one by fifteen z to the power minus, and that's expected. That has to happen because the degree must go down by one, right? So, as expected, the degree decreases by one because the z to the power minus two term is eliminated. And that leaves you with one by one minus one by fifteen the whole squared minus eight by fifteen into one minus one by fifteen the inverse <laughs> divided by one minus. One by fifteen, the whole squared. So, in fact, we can even simplify this further. Is that correct? We get this, don't we? One minus half. Three. We can simplify this. So, you see, is is this expression correct? This is correct? Yes. Now we can simplify because we can note that this is of the form one minus x squared. And this is one minus x, so you can write one plus x here. You can you know, cancel this, or you can take it separately. You know, either way, whatever you like. So you get one minus eight by fifteen divided by one plus x, so one plus one by fifteen times z inverse, and that leaves you with. One minus eight by sixteen z inverse. So one minus half z inverse. As expected, this is again. So this is a one z. Is that correct? Now again, it should be noted as expected that the coefficient of z to the power zero in a one z again comes out to be one as expected, and therefore the coefficient of the highest power of z, namely z inverse, in a one z is essentially k one, which means k one is minus half. And once you have k one, you have completed the lattice for the denominator. But now we need to write the lattice for the numerator. So essentially, what we have is a lattice of the following form. <coughs> we 
we have an E2 there. And let's go back to the structure, the generic structure, and then draw it for this specific case. This is the generic structure. We need a minus kn plus 1 and a plus kn plus 1. And we need a z inverse every time you take one step. So you need a z inverse here, and you need a z inverse here. And you need a minus, so you see, remember it's E2 here and E2 tilde here. So I don't need to keep writing the others, but you have a minus K2 there and the K2 here. <coughs> and the minus K1 here and the K1 here. And this is E0 and this is E0 tilde. And of course, this is E1 and this is E1 tilde. So we need to take C0 times this plus C1 times this plus C2 times this and add them. So X is given here and y is tapped off here. And we now need to obtain C0, C1 and C2. So we know the values. We know K1 is equal to minus half and K2 is 1 by 15. And please note that we had assumed a stable causal system to begin with. In fact, we explicitly wrote the system in terms of its poles. You see, that's why I, I, that's the reason why I wrote the system in factored form in the numerator and denominator first. You see, if you look back, let me put that system, system function back here before you. The system function has poles which are both inside the unit circle and therefore the system is stable. And as expected, the denominator polynomial yields both lattice coefficients less than 1 in magnitude, as was the necessary and sufficient condition. This is a verification, not a proof, but a verification. Now we need to determine the C0, C1, C2. So let's begin. Now we know what these are. We know what the A's are. A2, of course, is 1 minus 8 by 15 z inverse plus 1 by 15 z raised to the power minus 2. A2 tilde is therefore 1 by 15 minus z to the power 0 if you like minus 8 by 15 z inverse plus z raised to the power minus 2. A1z is 1 minus half z inverse and therefore a1 tilde z is minus half plus z inverse. <coughs> and of course a0 and a0 tilde are identically 1. And therefore what we have is C2 times A2 tilde z plus C1 times A1 tilde z plus C0 A0 tilde z. Now, A0 tilde z is 1. This is equal to the, to the numerator. And the numerator is 1 minus z inverse plus 1 by 4 
z raised to the power minus 2. <coughs> now, let us expand this relationship. C2 times A2 tilde, which is 1 minus 8, I am sorry, it is 1 by 15 minus 8 by 15. z to the power minus 1 plus z raised to the power minus 2 plus c 1, a 1 tilde which is minus half plus z inverse plus c 0 is equal to 1 minus z inverse plus 1 by 4 z raised to the power minus 2. As expected, the coefficient of z raised to the power of minus 2 can be compared on both sides. It comes only from here. And therefore, we have C2 is equal to 1 by 4. And therefore, we have C1 into minus half plus z inverse plus C0 is equal to 1 minus z inverse plus 1 by 4 z raised to the power of minus 2 minus c2 which is 1 by 4 times 1 by 15 minus 8 by 15 z inverse plus z raised to the power minus 2. Subtracting the term with c2 from both sides. Now, after you have subtracted as expected, you see that one fourth z to the power minus 2 is annihilated. So, one fourth z to the power minus 2 minus one fourth z to the power minus 2. So, you get a degree 1 term only. And let us write that down. So, therefore, c1 into minus half plus z inverse plus c0 is equal. 1 minus 1 by 4 into 15 plus z inverse into minus 1 plus 8 by 4 into 15 and the z to the power minus 2 term is annihilated and is killed is annihilated. <coughs> and therefore c1 is now very clear as well. This is essentially C1 now. The coefficient of z to the power minus 1 is C1. So, once you have C1, you can subtract this term from this side again and find C0 finally. So, we can continue this. We can now subtract C1 times minus half plus z inverse from the right hand side and obtain C0. And I will leave that to you as an exercise. So, this has illustrated the process of obtaining a lattice realization of an HZ. And this lattice realization can be used to realize either an FIR system function or an IIR system function. In the case of an IIR system function, the lattice structure gives an insight into the stability. In the case of an FIR system function, the lattice structure is just another structure which is regular. And in the assignment on filter design, you are encouraged to realize both the FIR and the IIR structures using the lattice form. Also. Yes. Now, you see what I have done now, what I have, yeah, that is a good point. You see what I did here was to ignore the gain of 3. And one, there are two ways in which you can do this. Either you could multiply all the c's by 3 or you could put one gain of 3 in the end. So, I had taken the numerator without the gain of 3. But you could either incorporate that gain of 3 in all the c's, so you could multiply each of the c's by 3 
or you could just put one gain of 3 finally, either way is fine. That is a good point, somebody has pointed that out. Is that correct? So, that completes the lattice structure and for the moment we are done with the subject of realization. In the next lecture we shall begin on a very important theme in discrete signal processing namely the discretization of the frequency axis. If you want to understand the frequency domain behavior, we need to discretize the frequency axis. How do we do it and how do we do it efficiently? We shall discuss this beginning with the next lecture. Thank you.